Ferrari just won at Le Mans, again for a third time in a row. And the 83A of course of Ferrari wins Le Mans 2025. And I was lucky enough to spend a few days with them at the track, speaking with the team to understand what it actually takes to win the world's most demanding race. So this is my story about the incredible racing, engineering and human performance behind the Ferrari team at Le Mans. For decades, Le Mans was about one thing, survival. The old saying was, to finish first, first you must finish. Cars would break down, drivers would pace themselves, and winning meant being the last one standing after 24 brutal hours. But when I arrived at their garage, one of their championship drivers told me basically the opposite. Everyone is pushing to Lacau since the lap one, so my choice, you have no choice, it was to push, and both the cars stay together. You know, this is the... The game in Le Bras is Le Mans, but I think it's uh, many years now that his life is. The teams are now so close and the cars so reliable that actually the drivers can continually push hard. But of course, there's still a limit to the engineering. These cars are incredibly complicated and go through huge stress with Le Mans' massive top speed. So reliability is still everything. But now, instead of just hoping your car survives while you lap around, every team has more confidence that their car will survive. Which means the only way to win is to push that car to its absolute maximum for 24 hours straight. But here's the thing, cars don't just magically become capable of 24 four hours flat out. That level of reliability comes from some of the most meticulous engineering preparation I've ever seen. Every bolt, every component, every stress point has been analysed, tested and perfected months before the car will even arrive at Le Mans. The answer to winning isn't just about having a fast car, it's about having absolute confidence that the engineering is bulletproof. To understand just how deep this preparation goes, I spent time with Lucio Calogero, the team's head of power units, and what he told me about their process was impressive. Every single part that goes into the car is physically inspected, not by computers, but by engineers who look at each component with their own eyes. This isn't just quality control, this is engineers taking personal responsibility for every piece that will face the 24-hour test. This is the, the, the best thing an engineer can do before this race, looking by himself at the parts that are going on to his car. So you, this is the only way to know what's happened, what's going to happen. Then comes the stress testing, and this is where it gets really interesting. They have to decide how close to the limit they'll push each part without gambling failure. Is a constant engineering balancing act. You want to remove every gram of unnecessary weight to make the car faster, but you can't compromise the strength needed to survive the 24 hours. And of course, Ferrari can't just build whatever they want. Le Mans, of course, has regulations, and some of the best in motorsport. Take aerodynamics. Unlike Formula One, where teams try to generate maximum downforce, Le Mans mandates a downforce to drag ratio, and this means that the teams have to innovate within constraints. Because Le Mans has both 200 mile an hour straights and tight technical sections, and the aero package has to work everywhere. Then there's balance of performance, BOP. The governing body literally adjusts each car's power and weight to try and make the racing as tight as possible. And it works very well. For example, Ferrari might get extra weight or reduced power depending on their recent performances. But the real complexity hits when you see what the drivers actually have to manage. This is a Ferrari 499p steering wheel, 20 plus buttons, each one controlling something critical, and some go many levels deep. There are hundreds of options. And this is a simulator that drivers use to train to remember all of the buttons. And it's not a normal driving simulator. There are no pedals, there's no steering, there's no actual driving. It's just to practice pressing buttons. What's the, the most common change? TC and, and brake yeah, break elements. What's the most common changes uh, are the T-shirt because uh, when you put new tires, they are cold and the grip level with the cold tires is like half, half of the one that you have with the cold tires and uh, break bars for the same reason because you have less uh, weight transfer with less grip so you can uh, 
maintain a little bit more braking torque on the console. Traction control, brake balance, power deployment, fuel mixture and differential settings. Drivers are constantly adjusting these while racing and they're not doing it alone. There are engineers monitoring every parameter, but the information still has to be filtered. Some tests of uh, engineers behind looking at the telemetry. Yeah. And uh, they all uh, uh, talk with the performance engineer, with the race engineer that is talking with the driver and the race engineer at has to filter the information and to give only a distilled part of the information to the drivers. As you might imagine, too much information overloads the driver. Imagine coming out of the pits into traffic at night, trying to figure out the car's balance and having to cancel a sensor three levels deep in the menu on your steering wheel. And that's why the steering wheel simulator exists. But all of this technology means nothing without the humans who have to execute for 24 hours straight. And the challenges go far beyond just staying awake. Ferrari, as with the other teams, run three drivers per car, each with their own individual driving style and preferences. Yet somehow they need to maintain consistent lap times and car behavior across driver changes, all while getting the very most out of the car. Then there are the driving challenges that come with all the changes that happen to a racing car and circuit over a full 24 hours. Le Mans is, uh, is really tricky because uh, you have a uh, day and you have the night and uh, we saw yesterday in the night we were fast because the car actually felt faster in the night because for some reason the balance was better. Then you go in a day when it's really hot in another car so you jump some, you know, you, you maybe start at 6 o'clock more afternoon then you jump back at 3 o'clock in the morning you have another car and then when you jump back you have another car so it looks like you have a three, four races in one race. The same car setup that works at 6 p.m. might be completely wrong at 3 a.m. And the temperature changes everything. Tire grip, aerodynamic efficiency, and engine performance. And this means there's always an ebb and flow between the different cars and teams. And unlike other races, Le Mans mixes professional drivers with amateurs or gentlemen drivers. And so managing traffic becomes an area where you can win a lot of time or potentially end your race. And with such massive closing speeds, it's really, really easy to make a mistake. So how hard do you push? But at the end is a balance, how much you want to risk, how much you want to lose with lap time. And you need to lose as much, as less as you can, but not risk too much. Because you can uh, put everything in the, in the beat in one cycle. And to add to the pressure, at least when I spoke to the drivers, Ferrari were going for their third consecutive win. But that pressure doesn't seem to phase the drivers. It's all there. It's just another race. I think I talked about it. It's just another race. And we'll just, you know, treat it like any other. But of course, it's not just another race. As much as the drivers might talk like this, it's impossible not to feel the pressure of Le Mans. 24 hours of perfection is required. And one mistake made by any team member could end it all. And as you might imagine, with three drivers over a 24 hour period, there is a lot of strategy involved. So to understand more, I spoke with Mauro Barbieri. So my job starts from uh, quite a few weeks before the event, where with my team, we start running some simulations to try and find the optimum uh, of the cars in terms of setup, configurations, and so on. Then we move into the race weekend, let's say, and this is where I'm uh, overlooking at the performance level of the three cars, trying to coordinate the work uh, um, of them. And then, uh, just to finish, we have the, the race. When, uh, and when the race starts, uh, I'm coordinating the strategy of the three cars. So normally, we have one strategist per car that is trying to optimize uh, the strategy of that specific car. But then as a team, to optimize our result, we need to make sure we, do, we take the right choices in the right moments. And to help things, Ferrari has built their own strategic software that projects race outcomes in real time. We, we developed the, the software, which is uh, automatizing uh, some, some of the calculation, projecting uh, the race pace uh, and the race outcome, and uh, also highlighting uh, if something is happening, like a safety car being deployed and so on and that is helping us quite quite a lot. But the real skill is adapting to the unpredictable. 
safety cars, slow zones, and mechanical issues. Every variable changes to the optimal strategy. We basically uh, set up the, 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 the weapons and we put them at the disposal of the team. They clearly know what they can pick up uh, depending on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the situation. That under 24 hour, as you correctly said, is totally unpredictable. We can guess what will happen in the next two stings, but no more than that. Uh, so we have uh, everything on the table, the, the, all the pencils, different colors, and we will pick up when it's needed. Right, okay. And can you share what some of those tools are? No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> but what Maro could tell me is that coordinating three cars creates unique challenges. And so part of my job is also to coordinate what the three cars are doing. Because, for example, here in Le Mans with the pit lane and pit area so tight, having the three cars pitting in the same moment would make all three cars lose time. So uh, imposing one, one car to be offset in the pit stop lap, for example, is one of my tasks. And as with the drivers, the change in temperature over 24 hours also becomes a crucial factor with strategy. Track temperature affects tyre performance, while air temperature affects aerodynamics and engine efficiency. But how does everything change over the 24 hours? If normally, on one side, uh, the, the performance is, um, should improve because the, the track is getting more and more rubbered, so more and more grippy. Um, then uh, you go through cool conditions during the night and during dawn, and that's where the tires do give their best. Um, but it, it also it depends on many factors, because you might have in the last part of the race that the track is getting dirty because you have a lot of gravel around, a few debris. But normally the, the quickest moment of the race is around uh, dawn, in, uh, on Sunday morning because you have uh, the visibility for the drivers because you have some, some light from the sun but the track is still, uh, is still on the cold side and so the, the tires keep their best. Once you have everything in place, all the preparation, all the strategy, it then comes down to execution. I spent some time in the Ferrari garage with the mechanics and engineers, and you can feel the tension. But mechanics, who were obviously exhausted after 20 hours of hard work, were still absolutely ready as soon as they were needed. It's a full team effort of hundreds of people. And to win, with margins measured in seconds over 24 hours, everything must work absolutely flawlessly. So after 24 hours of watching this machine operate, it's easy to see what makes Le Mans so special. It's not just about building fast cars anymore, although that is very important. But modern racing technology has become so good, so advanced, that it's paradoxically returned to being about pure human performance. The cars can go flat out for 24 hours. But the question is, can the humans? Can the engineers maintain focus when running on fumes? Can the strategists adapt to every variable? And can the drivers perform perfectly when exhausted? Le Mans has evolved over the years, but it remains the ultimate test, not just of machines, but of humans working at their absolute limit. So Ferrari did win again. It was their third consecutive victory but they still celebrated it like it was their first. Because pushing flat out for 24 hours, well, that's something that never gets easier. Huge thanks to Ferrari for giving me the incredible access with their Le Mans operation. If you enjoyed this video, check out this video just here, and I'll see you next time.